Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, with another awesome chat for AwesomeCast.net. We got a very special one uh, going on here. Please check out everything at AwesomeCast.net. Subscribe to us on video and audio formats. Uh, check out the Patreon if you're digging what we're doing here. If you find value in it, uh, you can uh, uh, you can you can you can pitch in for the Awesome Cast Weekly. We got uh, another. We got a really cool Patreon on there uh, helping us out, and uh, that all just came through. There are real people who. Who paid us uh so uh hopefully that helps uh, uh pick some things up helps with the expenses of running a podcast like this a world-renowned podcast and uh and with us today is somebody who's not uh, unfamiliar with podcasting he is doug durda he is uh, i expected you to put the glasses back on by the time i came back to you uh <laughs> it was hot did i just lose them oh Wait, no i don't want to glare that couch i don't want to blind anything there you go there you go Wait. it's podcasting so bright he's wearing shades from shouldidrinkthat.com joining us. How you doing, Doug? Fantastic, Sorg. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. It's nice that podcasting uh, uh, is back. I didn't know we went away. <laughs> no one told me about that. I we didn't were, get the memo. We were just joking about that a little bit. Uh, but uh, but no, no, generally, uh, so I wanted to have you on here for a while because uh, just to talk podcasting, uh, I don't know if we really need to recap generally the story of should I drink that. I mean, just for maybe a little bit of what is should I drink that for uh, those that may be new to you. Well, uh, should I drink that as a craft beer podcast started in 2006. So we've been going, we're pushing our 10 year anniversary. Nice. Or I guess I, I should say my 10 year anniversary. Now, uh, last year, sick puppy left us for the whole, Hey, I've got a job that's paying me a lot of money to do stuff. I don't have time to do podcasting. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's kind of me now, but, uh, we've been around for almost 10 years. Uh, been on several, been in several magazines, uh, print publications, webs, uh, like news media sites, stuff like that. Talking about craft beer, uh, the whole purpose for the show was there was a need for the everyday person to talk about craft beer to everyday people. And at the time in 2006, there was a lot of real pretentious shows talking down. Like if you didn't know about craft beer, it's like the whole wine snobbery thing. Mm-hmm. It that transferred over into the craft beer world. So sick puppy and I were sitting at the bar one day and we're like, Hey, there's gotta be something we can do about it. And people were always asking us about beer and we were just, you know, two average Joe's two average it guys. And we said, Hey, you know, there's this new thing called podcasting. Let's give it a shot. I I've got an AV background. What the heck? Why not? So we, uh, we filmed our first show and honestly, we were only going to last about 10 episodes. It was just something to try. And then we had one video come out that just went viral and we're like, you know what? Maybe we should stick to this. Let's see what happens. And next thing we know, we're getting emails from all over the world. Uh, we go to craft, we go to beer stores with people are like, hey, you're the, should I drink that, guys? What should I drink? And we offer suggestions and uh, we never put anybody down for what they drink. We offer, you know, like I said, suggestions, you know, ideas of what you could do to you know, get outside your comfort zone. And uh, I think it was that whole idea that just made it boom for us is you know, we're very approachable and uh, we like to hang out and have a good time have some beers and bs and that's that's what became the show we're showing some uh old videos you had some early commercials and stuff because you're mostly i mean you weren't uh generally a video show right off the bat right uh, we were strictly well, audio yeah and yeah. we would shoot video in the studio once in a while we would take it with a just a little casio camera or whatever we had with us just to kind of do a behind the scenes mm -hmm. because at the time we didn't have the bandwidth and video blogging wasn't really a thing. YouTube was still really new, but we didn't know what to do with it. So we made videos, but it wasn't part of the show. Mm -hmm. So we had a couple video episodes that we released. It was just us doing goofy things that, you know, fans would vote on if we should chug a certain beer wearing certain clothes and, or doing whatever. So it's, it was just our way to get in front of the camera, kind of put a face to the, the voice and, and have some fun with it. And as you can see with the video, uh, we definitely have the face for radio. <laughs> wow, I didn't have any hair in that one. <laughs> no, you don't in a lot of these early that's ones. That's right. I forgot that, yeah, there was a, a period where I had a shaved head. Like, there's a bunch of these. And, and you call, of course, uh, the most reverend uh, Father Spoon, and you very uh, dressed the part. Oh, the Utopias. <laughs> Which was a very rare beer. And I, I, so that one I actually did with 
a uh, like a Kodak camera, mm-hmm. which is why the video is awful. Our early videos sucked. They were terrible. Mm-hmm. But we had fun with it, and, and that was the main thing. We weren't doing it for anyone besides ourselves and our fans. Like, hey, let's have some fun with it. But the, the So the whole priest thing came around because I, I have a Catholic background. I'm, I come from a very Catholic family. And whenever we would go out, people would, for some reason, just gravitate towards me and tell me their life story and what's going on, like what's wrong with them. I'd never ask for it. It just happened. And I'd I'll, always I'll say, all right, well, dude, hey, I'm sorry. I'll offer some advice, whatever. And, uh, and then the one day, Sick Puppy looks at me. He's like, you know what? You should forgive sins for suds. And we kind of looked at each other and went, well, my nickname was Spoon from college. So I always kept that. And I'm like, we could do something with this. And then we go, we were in, heavily involved with this drinking forum called the Real Happy Hour. Mm-hmm. And then someone said, Father Spoon. And it just stuck. And next thing we know, the podcast has taken off. And there's me in a priest outfit with a shaved head, junkie beers. <laughs> awesome. And you fit right in. And so so um, you were somebody that, that you know, talking about early podcast, we, we kind of joked around about the podcasting going away, coming back. Talked about that a little bit with Justin Kanaki, the co-founder of Podcast Pittsburgh. Uh, a couple episodes here on the awesome chat. Um, so so again, you're, you're one that's been around yeah, as long as I have, as long as anybody who's been like the longer podcasters from way back in the day, again, we're our 10th iteration of uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh this year. Uh, I think Leo Laporte just support, celebrated 10 years of his uh, of his uh, This Week in Tech, which is what got me into it. Uh, so w- I was digging through stuff, and I always love, because we, we were at the first PodCamp, but we're giving this session, and here's the back, here's some familiar backs of heads right there. Still <laughs> not much hair going on there. And we're talking about grassroots and, and working with our fans and, and, and doing great stuff, and there's these two yahoos right up front, and I was like, I wonder what the deal is with these two. <laughs> you know what? Uh, wow. Wow. I can't right tell you up. the last time I watched this video. Mm-hmm. I wonder if our advice is still good. Wow. <laughs> Now there's more people in the room. I want to point out we, there are, there we, were more people. We in the had room. a good ten people in the room, right? Here's the story how we got involved with this room too. Mm-hmm. So sick puppy and I. So sick puppy's on on my right, and we're we're wandering around, and Kanaki comes up to us and says, "Hey, you're the beer guys, right?" And we're like, <laughs> we're like, yeah." He goes, "You know, there's some wrestlers downstairs. I think you guys would get along with them." And we're like, "All right, sure." <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and I think he had meant he may have mentioned something about like you should connect with the beer guys at some point. The the, the wrestling and beer just makes sense, you know, as we were kind of rolling into this. And it ended up it did make sense because we're like we try to interact with our fans the same way. Mm-hmm. And we're like I remember telling Sick Puppy through I'm like, this is fantastic. This is this is what we want to do. These guys get us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and getting it, you know, coming into podcast, we had no idea there were other podcasters in Pittsburgh. Yeah. We had no like it, we knew about Kanaki and everything that he was doing was something to be desired, which is how we got started with getting involved, finding out about PodCamp, and then yeah, so he tells us to come down and see the wrestling guys, and you know the rest of it's just history. But it, so it ends up that you and I do have something in common in the past where we both had Shoutcast servers. <laughs> yes, we did. I guess, are we are we like the the, the beta podcasters at this point? Because. <laughs> We could be. I mean, so so we both. So I I had the Western PA Jugglers I actually still own the d- domain. I'm considering doing something with it, maybe. Uh, and ran that for nine years, and that turned into this. Somehow I got into this idea of doing the shoutcast radio thing. I I I God bless my wife for putting up with me doing these kinds of things because I had scheduled and done shows. I was doing stuff after Monday Night Raw. And it, it, for me, it spun into just talking about wrestling with my friends, which I'm like, well, we can do this here instead of the 15 people on my server. Let's put it out on iTunes. <laughs> was a great idea, <laughs> right? I, and, you, no, and you did something similar. So I had Clark's Radio, which if you're from Pittsburgh, everyone knows the band The Clarks. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know I was actually their web guy for mm-hmm. a while. I was their web guy for about 10 years. And in 2003, I think it was... Uh, their web team approached me and said, "Hey, we've seen the stuff that you do." I so for those of you who don't know, also I I have a web background. I'm originally an IT guy, web developer, web programmer, web designer, web whatever they wanted to call us at the time, and uh, and now I do marketing. So I, I'm like a marketer's worst dream because I have a tech background. <laughs> so I call them on a lot of stupid things. Anyway, 
uh, so back then they said, Hey, could you help us out with the website? I'm like, sure. And we started talking. I'm like, you know what? I really, I want to get something going with streaming audio. There's got to be something with it. And I remember I had Comcast was just put into our house. We just had the fiber in there. I'm like, Oh, I got fast cable internet. What can I do with this? So I, I fired up a, this big honking compact, uh, server that I had and I put shoutcast on it and they started providing me some music. And then I went around on Napster and a few, other, I think it was Napster and a few others. I started downloading music and the band was like, how'd you get that music? How'd you get these bootlegs? I'm like, Oh, it's on the internet. <laughs> this great thing called the internet. So I would, I have this great collection. So, so you were kind of, you were, were you doing it as conjunction of the website or like, I was doing it on my own, not necessarily affiliated with them because with their label, I couldn't say I was doing this. Right. But I was also a web guy. So you were kind of okay. When the, it came let's put it this way. The band didn't care. Okay. The, they were totally cool with it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it helped them get a lot more fans because it was getting their music out as the way they saw it. So they were actually pretty innovative for the time thinking you know, how music was getting out to the crowds. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I started taking requests. So I would do live shows where I would take requests over AOL Instant Messenger. I'm with you on that. That's what, we, then, that's what we used to use, too. We would start an AOL chat room with Instant Messenger. Yes. So then I, I wrote a script where you could send a message to my – I had this uh, like Clerks Radio IM account. And when you would send – like tweet a song – or tweet, geez. When you would send a song over IM, it would cue that up as the next song to play. Nice. So it auto, so you were like your own DJ for it. Yeah. And I had it set so it wouldn't repeat the same song like so many times. And it was pretty fun. I, I have no idea if that script even still exists. It's, it might be on a hard drive somewhere in my basement. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I got started was I, I did Clark's Radio for years. And it, it was a blast. And I still have the archive of songs. And there are some – Really crazy covers. I don't know if they would let me put those out there now, but see, I know I had a thing going on where um, there was like shoutcast to MP3, so we do it on the shoutcast server and turn it into an MP3. And I think I have even like parts of just blocks of stuff because like we we were at the point where I was scheduling DJs to do their own shows. Like there's some kid in California called DJ Elf that did a show on our server for a while. Never freaking met the kid, you know. Which is kind of funny when you look at the shows these days. I looked into doing stuff like that, but the problem that I ran into is we had there the Clark's forum was like Facebook today, where and Twitter today, where people just went on there and just complained, yeah, and fought, and like it, it almost got physical a couple times, not with me, but with other members. So the forum groups kind of took over the radio. And so I wanted to do that, but I couldn't because I didn't know what would happen with it. Right. I, it got to the point where the band's like, you guys got to chill the hell out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it got nasty, but little did I know uh, that was nothing compared to like how Facebook is today and, and Twitter. <laughs> Jeez. See, it was all, that, that it was was all good. It was just the juggalos. We were all right. You know, <laughs> you guys uh, were peaceful. We were, were all a bunch of rowdy yinzers. That's right. That's right. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's that bar music, you know? I mean, it just kind of, uh, it's a whole different crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a fight to see who was the number one super fan is what oh. it turned out to. And I always sat back and went, this is crazy. And little did I know, it was a precursor to having a job in social media. There you go. So oh, they, they kind of got me set for it. So so not only that, so you, you, you've you done all this audio, you've done all this podcasting, but you're also a prolific, prolific, can I say, so, blogger? Listen. I mean, I, I don't know, long not, time. Not recently. No, uh, but... I, I actually took... The, a lot of this summer off because I wanted to spend more time just hanging out with my family. But generally, like you've been doing a lot of great stuff. That's uh, one, you know, got some stuff that's got attention. You know, the, you turn it kind of into the daddy blogging thing. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of just the life blog for the most part, right? I actually started, I guess it would be live journaling in 97. <laughs> and I saw one of we, my, which is another parallel. Now, <laughs> I didn't do the live journaling. I was just a GeoCities and I had front page express. I, I've owned my own domain since 97. I still own the domain. Mm -hmm. Not DouglasDurda.com, but it's another site that I have that I just, I've just i always just done testing on. And I found old archives of, of stuff I wrote on there. Mm -hmm. And it, at the time, it wasn't live journaling. It was just no. the, the stuff that we had on there was just, hey, you know, hanging out in Pittsburgh this weekend. Can't, you know, can't wait till I move here someday. Little did I know a few months later, hey, I'm moving to Pittsburgh. 
Mm-hmm. And then I documented my move. And you know, next thing I know, I, I'm getting married. I have kids. And I'm documenting their birth. I actually live blogged <laughs> Teaspoon's first uh, Teaspoon's birth. Uh, but it was the day that he came home because uh, my first son was in the NICU for 28 days. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the day that we were bringing him home, I stayed up all night and I live blogged everything that was going on. So I would have a record of what that first night was where we could stay with him in a room. And then we would bring him home that night or that day. And it was, it was pretty crazy. Wow. Wow. So, I mean... Uh, as that really kind of, uh, it seems like you were social before social was cool, for one thing. <laughs> is that is that fair to say? <laughs> oh, oh, I did social, sure. Yeah. In fact, a lot of people I'm finding out that are heavy into social media and podcasting did a lot of this stuff back in the day. It's just, but we never thought anything of it. Like, we didn't think it was something special. We're like, hey, this is a cool technology. Right. We're all, we were geeks before being called geek was cool. Yeah. Is the way I see it. Before... Yeah. You know, the, as uh, Gary Vaynerchuk likes to say, you know, marketing ruins everything. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much what happened to like the, a lot of us that were into computers and everything in the late 90s, early 2000s. They all of a sudden came out, you know, with geek wear and, and ooh, let's have ads with kids wearing hip clothes and carrying floppy disks, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So it's, there's that small group of us that are still around that were like, okay, yeah, I guess we're the old bees. That's mm-hmm. what they call us. The what? The old bees. I heard someone the mention old that. bees. Old bees. So instead of a newbie, you're an old bee. I don't know. Oh, someone mentioned that to me once. I'm like, seriously, just because I remember what it was like to have a floppy disk. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of us that, that were just big into technology. Then we still love technology. Right, right, right. Back when it was harder to be into technology. Yes, because we would do whatever we could to to get something to work. We mm-hmm. were like the original roadies where we would duct tape stuff in electrical tape and figure out, okay, you hold that, that cable out the window right there. Let's see if we can get a connection on a signal here and just see what happens. It's mm-hmm. just, I, I think that's just part of our, uh, you know, part of our nature. Part of our wiring. Yeah. It's just that we're the kids in the Nintendo generation. So, so are the, are the hardcore tinkerers now like more the coders and the like 3d print makers? Like, is that, is that where that's kind of moved to you think? I think that's part of it. Mm-hmm. They like, found a way to justify their uh, because that, their, it their has to be some curiosity. It has to be this thing that's like inaccessible to the general person, right? To, to, to satisfy a little bit of like I can do something important here because like I, I feel like 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 in our age, you know, taking the computer part and being able to put in a new card and 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 dealing with DOS was like mom couldn't do that, right? Right. So now it's like that's the new thing because it feels like everybody can do computers. Everybody can make web pages now. Yeah. You've got like Squarespace and everything. So like the, the skill set that I had in the late 90s, early 2000s doesn't matter today. Right. Much. Same here. Everything I went for school and, is gone. And that's totally fine because yeah. people are making and kids are making better things, which is great. That's how that's how evolution happens. Mm-hmm. Um, what I love, though, is that no one has stopped being curious and no one has given up. So like if they say... I wonder if I could do that. No one's going to say, no, you can't do that because there's always a way to get something accomplished. And I, I think the geeks are st- like the like old school that, geeks are the ones still working to figure that out. Whereas the new kids are like, eh, tired. I want to do this. Can, can I get an example there? Uh, this, this is a little broad. Like, what, like, how do you mean? You mean people just get it? Oh, 3D printers are a great example. Yeah. I'm sure they said you will never be able to do like what Willy Wonka does where he transfers you know, the candy bar, he shrinks it on the TV and sends it across, you know, and they got a real candy bar. Mm-hmm. Kind of, sort of, not really the same thing, but like, we can now print a candy bar. Yeah, yeah. Like, Hershey prints chocolate for you. That's unbelievable. And I'm sure somebody said, you can't do that. And someone said, yeah, I can. We can do that. We can figure that out. And nice. that's what I love. It's the drive now. They're like, of course we can figure it out. It, it, it's, it's kind of the, uh, everybody's making the future that they saw in movies happen right lexus claims they came out with a hoverboard (laughs) i watched the video yesterday (laughs) and it looks cool it looks legit if it is i don't know but man if this thing happens thank you back to the future michael j fox and nike says they're coming out with the shoeless or the was it the uh the shoeless sneakers where they self-strap the, the laceless one. Laceless, right? yeah. thank you. Yeah, Lexus hoverboard. I feel like is that one that we've talked about before? Is uh, it, is I saw it, just... it come out yesterday. I think. Okay. There was something on 
on Facebook about it. I'm, I'm looking like, like for the YouTube video now. But that, that's part of like what I love about what's happening right now is that people are encouraged just to do it. Mm-hmm. It's no longer like, well, no, my parents said I can't do it. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. No, go out on the internet. You can crowdsource whatever you want now. Mm-hmm. You can figure this out. Somebody else out there in this world is thinking, I can do that too. I can help this guy. And I think that's the that's the one thing. You know, technology's gone out of the way, and we can get to the social part, right? When, when we talk about social media, we talk about podcasting. You know, I, I'm still amazed that we can do a podcast, and it doesn't matter where the heck you are. And 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 I feel like I have friends that I've met twice physically. You know what I mean? Um, that in and it's really kind of broken down. This looks CG, man. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so it looks cool, CG. Though. It doesn't it, look real. Blown up on the screen that I had at work. I'm like, this know. looks cool. If they could pull this off. And it works on water. That's uh, that's aren't my issue. To work on water. That is my issue with it. Hoverboards do not work on water. Unless yeah. you've got power. Unless you've got power. <laughs> oh, the Lexus. You know, they got the Lexus power. I but guess. see, it They're wouldn't surprise me, though, if a company like Lexus does come out with this, though. Mm-hmm. These car companies have so many engineers that it would not surprise me if they did something like this. Jeez. Jeez. So what do you, um, uh, we're going to have a whole session on this, but a little bit of a preview of that. Uh, I think you're part of the longevity. I forget what he ended up calling it. Uh, but we're going to be on a panel of uh, the few of us that are the long, 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 long time people that were there uh, back in our day at PodCamp Pittsburgh 1. Uh, he called it the OG podcasters. Is it? Is that what's up? Now, hence the joke that I made. Oh, oh. I made a bad joke beforehand about Olive Garden podcasters and which makes me want to go to Olive Garden. Now. I'm so up for all. Let's go Olive Garden after this. I actually have a review of Olive Garden. I have to write because they invited me. Another perk of podcasting: you get invited to go out to do things, and I got invited to Olive Garden to try their new menu. I got to get and on some good. kind of list because uh, yeah, Jagoff was telling me today about some kind of dinner he gets, some kind of blogger dinner he gets invited to. He's like, what? I don't want to eat rabbit and stuff. I'm like, dude, I'll go. It's an experience. <laughs> But I don't know. I need I need to do a, a food show. Apparently, that's what I'm missing around here, so I can get a, a, a food perk. I get a lot of random requests, mm-hmm. and let me tell you, being a beer guy is awesome because uh, obviously it's I love beer. That's why I'm I'm doing it. I love the industry and I love the culture. I love everything about it. So every once in a while, a box shows up on my porch. I'm like, hey, look, beer mail. That's kind of cool. I actually had for a long time. I was doing the music interviews uh, alongside Western PA Juggalos, and I would just get albums i didn't buy an album for the longest time because <laughs> i just kept, like oh look i guess got my thing coming out with a new album here it is i guess i should review it you know um it, so that was that was a nice line wrestling nobody has money in wrestling or we're not big enough for the big three so <laughs> it's kind of a little harder to pull off in, well, you know, in my people side. in beer don't have money either yeah that's why i get invited to beer fest and they're yeah. like look we can't pay you but if you We'll let you in for free if you cover it for us and give us a promotion. Sure, I'm going to do that. All right. Which which of our industries is more destitute? Uh, <laughs> I'm talking indie wrestling, and well, I don't think anybody makes money yeah, there. Yeah, craft beer right now is like the hot thing. Right. Oh, but so so so, you, so you're telling me craft beer is like is is indie beer as opposed like it, it kind of in parallel of an indie wrestling kind of thing? In a way, it it's getting more mainstream now. Is the thing? It's okay. getting it's starting to get over that hump. Like five years ago. I would say absolutely, yeah. This was, this is a lot like indie. Uh, there's still a lot of re- or wrestlers. Yeah, there's still a lot of breweries that are struggling to get by and have to do a lot of, you know, like homegrown grassroots things to get big. But okay. but we do have some big breweries that are out there now too. So there's guys like, uh, you know, guys like Hitchhiker, which is a small brew pub, brewery. brewery. I don't want to call them brew pub, just a brew pub, but they're a brewery in Mount Lebanon fits you know maybe a hundred and some people or whatever but they make fantastic beer they don't have a big marketing budget right it's all in word of mouth and it's good it's fantastic (laughs) beer it's some of my favorite beer in pittsburgh yeah and that's how they're getting the word out about that so they're not blowing a a bunch of money on advertising and stuff like that it's all word of mouth Mm -hmm. and i think that's probably the same with the indie wrestlers is that it's word of mouth Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's low end Uh, yeah yeah exactly there's no marketing budget for any of this is the big thing. So. That's why people turn to social media. But I think the the big shock that they're having now is that social media isn't free anymore. Right. Well, and, I mean, it, I think I think you can still. I feel that you can still get pretty far, not paying for it. 
there's ways around it. Yeah. And I think this goes back to like our our past or our wiring of trying to find a way around it. Right. I think if you got good content and you have something people can rally around a bit, like like you guys have conversation already with with the beer. Um, I, I think if you're a brewer or something, you can go like you can go on and, and have that conversation around that because there's people looking for you, right? And you just need to find where those people are. Uh, same with the wrestling. Uh, you know, I, I think you just need to find out what that place. I, I think you have to be smarter about it. It's just it's going to be harder. The big thing is find where your audience is. Mm-hmm. And as much as people want to complain about Google+, Plus, there are a ton mm-hmm. of beer people on there for me. Mm-hmm. That has been a hotbed for me. Great stuff for podcasters, photographers. It, it's fantastic because there's not a bunch of ads. There's not a lot, a lot of BS on there. So I'm getting like the people that I want to talk to. My feed is filled with barbecue and beer. That's all I want to see. <laughs> there you and, go. and that's all it is. And it's it's worked great for me. Facebook, on the other hand, we ha- I think I'm up to, I don't know, I could be like 1,100, 1,200 fans or something like that on our page. I have mm-hmm. no idea what we're at. And I made a post the other day. It reached nine people. Oh, wow. I posted another one. It reached 500. Now, are you leveraging it's- groups over there? Because I feel like uh, uh, groups and uh, are, are, are pretty hot right now. And like it seems like we get a lot of traction out of it. That's going to be the next thing. We had a group. Mm-hmm. And then because of Facebook's rules for you know, how visible your page was going to be. They kept saying, go to pages. So we got rid of, we have the group. We just haven't been active in it. And just from being on even the wrestling mayhem one, I'd, I'm like, this is the place to be. Cause I'm always getting updates about it. Right. Right. I right. never get updates on pages because my feeds filled with cat pictures and political stuff. And, uh, Oh my God, this food is, is poisonous. Don't eat it. You know, it's all this stuff. I don't want to <laughs> <What>? see. <laughs> yeah. Like, Oh my God, you know, what's really in this food as, it's just stuff that people are sharing from like BS websites that somehow are like getting all this money from clickbait. I don't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My mind just hurts when I think about all the, the junk out there and people are fine sharing it. Mm-hmm. So why not share my junk? That sounds bad. <laughs> That's going to be the title but, of this episode. Why not share my junk share with my Doug junk. Durda? Uh, but <laughs> it is an interesting spot. So it's come around and uh, – uh, everybody's trying to figure out how to make money off of this stuff. Uh, but uh, well, tell me, uh, your 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 podcast or your blog or whatever the case may be, what's kind of the uh, the most awesome thing that's kind of uh, come from uh, the work you've done in this over over the last ten years, etc. I've met some really awesome people, mm-hmm. uh, people that I would never would have met any other way. Uh, people don't think I'm an introvert, but I am in ways. Aren't, aren't all of us <laughs> like i'm very comfortable in front of a microphone and a camera yeah. but out in public settings i just i like to keep to myself and just kind of chill i noticed i i noticed that social media day we basically just talked to each other and a uh, few people that we knew yeah but also we were in a room full of like 25 year old females that's true too that got a little awkward yeah i i kind of walked in like i'm the old guy here <laughs> oh hey there's a couple people i know too oh there's Bobby. There's are, Kim. Are we the old heads now? We are. We're are like we the, the like, people. why are they still coming to the show? <laughs> you know, is that what's happening? Whose dad now? is that? Is that the narc? Is that the narc? <laughs> I, I guess so. I guess so. They're like, like I always, yeah. wor- I always worried about that going to like insane cloud posse shows, but apparently there's people just as old as I am. So I'm not worried about that anymore. It's becoming the grateful dead. And, and, and apparently so is podcasting. The plus side though is, I only go to Pearl Jam concerts and everyone's the same. Oh, age there you go. So, <laughs> I fit in with those people. There you go. I did go to Garth Brooks though this past year. Yeah. And my brother got us awesome seats for like third row. Oh, and I'm, wow. lo- I'm looking around because I don't listen to country music. Right. But I'm like third row Garth Brooks. Of course I'm going to go. I just, maybe I'll, I'll recognize some songs. I actually ended up knowing more than I thought. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking around I'm like, there's like four year olds, fifty year olds. Hey, in front of me, there's a bunch of drunk twenty year olds. I'm like, when it comes to music, like, dude, whatever you dig, you dig. And there's really no, I don't think there's like too many stereotypes around anymore for music. No, no. Uh, you have your your certain groups, but if you love the music, uh, my friend Melissa Bruno said it great. She's like, roll down the windows and just jam, just sing your, sing away. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do that. So I did that this past weekend, and I loved it. I sang all these cheesy 90s songs, top of my lungs, singing away. And I'm like, this is this is kind of nice. Awesome. 
Awesome. Uh, so, so you got to meet a lot of people. What's the, what's the, I'm kind of co-opting some questions from our Indie Mayhem show. What's the worst thing about 10 years of podcasting? Uh, doing the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. I worry, I worry about it getting boring and it, it kind of is right now for me because I don't have a co-host and I, I was able to feed a lot off of sick puppy. Right. And it was mostly us hanging out. Uh, I'm doing a lot of it now to keep the show going and just to just to talk about beer, but I'm not getting a lot of feedback in return. It, it's really boring to drink by yourself. You shouldn't do it. <laughs> That's why I do it online. <laughs> if you do it on the internet, it's not drinking alone, kids. It's technically public. So I, I try to get my buddies involved once in a while, but I, I do miss like, having someone across from me just to talk and, and mm. do stuff. So, it, I mean, if anyone would be interested in it, who knows? Maybe we could get something to work. Uh, send me your demo tapes. To, <laughs> people Pod, still do. Podcast yeah. demo tapes? Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with it. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it was just getting, getting tired of the subject. So I, I want to find some way to, to make it fun again. Mm-hmm. It's, I have fun when I talk about beer. And it's just a lot of work as one person right now. Yeah. And trying to balance a podcast and a blog and family and work and everything is just like full steam ahead right now. I'm I'm having a hard time finding time to do it. And I want to make sure that whatever I put out is the best that I can put out. And I just don't want to throw something up for the sake of doing it because there's no point in that. Mm-hmm. Now, I noticed you've, you've converted over to uh, Google Hangout. For, for this stuff is that is that kind of helping the process there or at least i guess the move the video right i've enjoyed using google hangout because it's it's helped me to get more creative with what i'm going to do mm-hmm. um plus if anyone would like to sponsor a t-shirt that i wear there you go there's probably something in that uh but i, I like the fact that i really have to jimmy rig my setup to get it to work with google hangouts I don't have a TriCast or anything. I've got cables running, praying to God that I can switch a screen fast enough on another laptop that I'm sharing a screen there. Oh. And that's how I do a lot of nice, it. Nice, nice. That's actually, what we do for our slideshows, yeah. I actually have about three or four laptops running. Somewhere there's, I think I have a picture of my setup, and I have like three or four laptops going at once, so I would know which screw, like I have them labeled like one, two, three, four, so I know where everything is, and I have my camera in front of me. So I could kind of go back and forth like that. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from people saying, we like it when you show what, what you're drinking and what's going on. And people that were listening to the audio were telling me, well, we can hear you, but it, what you're saying and how you're expressing yourself doesn't make sense until I saw the video. And I'm like, oh, that's why he's doing that. Mm-hmm. So I'm also teaching myself, okay, I'm the only person doing this, so I have to keep in mind for the audio and audio is still by far dominant for me. Oh, of course. Of course it's, it is for us too, but it's, it's, it's just kind of nice to have that video component too, right? It is because people go onto the website and look at it. The problem is my videos can be up to an hour long on Oof. some of these and no one's watching them, but yeah. I do that so I could come down into snippets then. But some people do watch the full show because they want to see everything that I'm talking about. So I have markers in the show notes saying, you know, marker 15 minutes, three seconds is when I start talking about this or, right, or whatever. Right. And down the road, you know, it's, I'm going to use that to bring in more interviews from people outside of my area. So it's a, I think it's a fantastic tool for podcasters to, you know, to, to do a show. And even if you're not going to keep the video, you can still download the video, rip out the audio, and there's your show. Right, and right. that's what I did. That, right. That's what I still do. And I have uh, an H4N mic that I use, my little handheld. I use that as my main mic now. I don't even use the mixer as much because I'm running out of room on my table. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're only using one mic too. Yes. So you don't really need that. It's, it's like uh, I'm considering for doing our, our awesome casting. I think I'm just going to bring one blue ball mic. I did it again. Blue snowball mic. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and just that's it. You know, I'm going to have two or three people around it. Uh, audio seems to be pretty good when we put three people around it on our Monday uh, podcast we do for a client. So I'm thinking instead of me bringing the board and having more to do to, for that setup, I'm trying to keep it as streamlined as possible. Um, I just wish I knew, I, I'd have to do more testing, but I wish I knew if I could put like a second blue snowball on and and have that kind of mix automatically Ooh. on Wirecast. That, that would be nice, right? You got me thinking now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that 
getting this far in podcasting has taught me, and I honestly, I didn't realize it until probably about a month or two ago, is that I just have to do it. Yeah. Because part of my professional background is I was a project manager for a, a very big corporation. So I analyzed the heck out of everything. Mm-hmm. I make sure everything is covered. And part of the problem with that is I also, then I procrastinate doing things. And I'm like, ah, eh, time's passed. I don't feel like doing it now. And over the summer, I've just like, screw it. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. So I started the process with, um, I bought a kegerator. I bought Sick Puppies kegerator, actually. And I said, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to start kegging beer. Um, I want to learn how to do this. That's like a next step for home brewing, which I, I do too, mm-hmm. is I want to get back into home brewing. I want to get serious about it and learn more about it. I just have to do it. So I, I talked to him and he's like, dude, just get it out of my house was the deal. You have a car or a truck to get out of here. It's yours. So I got his kegerator. And then I started looking around the basement. I'm like, this needs to be my studio because right now it's in my living room or my dining room, which echoes terribly. I'm like, I got to do something. So I've already started working on my basement. I've called contractors about what I have to do to fix the windows and certain things in there. So I'm just like, I just have to do it. And now hopefully I can get back to my blog and and start doing that also. Just got to find that time. But the, the other thing was my family's never taken a vacation mm-hmm. ever unless it was for like a wedding or something. And this year we said, just do it. Just I hate saying that like it's Nike, but seriously, we just did it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? When we get back, the work is still going to be here because I would work weekends and nights and work myself to the bone. And finally said, just do it. So we took a couple vacations. Nothing really outlandish. Mm-hmm. Went to uh, Chautauqua for a little bit. Nice. Went to Texas to go visit some family, which was, we had that plan. But yeah, we went to Chautauqua. We're going to go camping soon. Uh, I'm going to Philadelphia next week. Nice. Or a couple weeks or whenever it is. Just go visit my friends. My family's stand behind. I'm like, I'm going to go visit friends. So, so that was something that podcasting kind of forced me into is if you want to do it, just do it. Who cares? Mm-hmm. And don't go bankrupt. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it's still have to keep bills in mind and, and stuff like and, that. But and that is a tough thing because I, I think a lot of people are like, "Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this podcast and make money from it." And I think that's we're kind of it's it's like indie wrestling. It's like craft beer. You're not exactly here because you want to make money and you have dollar signs. You're in the wrong biz. The biggest problem that people make, and I see this in the podcast community a lot on Facebook mm-hmm. and in Google Plus, is that. People that are new to it assume that they need a marketing team, they need a professional setup, they need a sound guy, and they need like professional web development. Right. And they think they're going to make money right away. Right. You're going to fail if you do that. Right. If you've never done this before, you are going to fail. I am sorry. You're failing. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. I'm not going to hug you. It's going to fail. Like hey, there, in there, I've seen arguments where where uh, when they talk about podcasting, uh, building a podcast. They're like, you can't become successful at it unless you put money into it. Like, I, I've heard of you can get to this threshold, but you're not going to get over that unless you've put advertising into your podcast, which I completely disagree. But what's good? Well, here's what's happening is people are investing, and I should kind of go back a little bit on the you're going to fail thing. Mm-hmm. People are investing a ton of money on this, and they do five, six episodes. And if it doesn't bring back a ton of money and viewers, they quit. Exactly. That's what I mean by you're going to fail is that you're not, you have to give it time. You have to find your niche. You've got to know what you're doing. Find your audience. You can't come out. This isn't, and the problem is it's a lot of marketing people telling this too. Right. That here's your solution to have a number one podcast and it never happens. You know how you have a number one podcast? You're uh, ESPN already or you're Adam Carolla or you're Kevin Smith. Like you have the, you're, you, you have you, a fan base already. You, hey, exactly. You have a fan base already. And none of like, who, who are we, you know, right off the bat. Now I can take some of my fan base, my small fan base from wrestling mayhem show and start this other show. And some yeah. people are reacting to it, but it's still going to be a small chunk of that other fan base. Right. And that's what I thought about was, should I drink that? When puppy told me he was leaving, the deal was if one of us quits, we both quit. That's mm-hmm. it. The show's over. And he's like, if you don't want to quit, don't. He's like, see what you can do with it. And that's what I've been doing. It's like, well, let me see if I can continue it like this. If not, I'm gonna, I'll do something else. Yeah, I'm not gonna stop podcasting. Right. I don't know if SIDT will stay around as it is. Uh, I'm hell bent on numbers, so I will make it to ten at least. 
the official 10 year, mm -hmm. which would be Cinco de Mayo next year. Wow. Oh, shit. That's coming up then. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized that I got to think of something for that. But I mean, if it ends, it ends, but I'm, I'm going to keep doing things and you know, we'll see. It's, I'm in a lull right now, so it's, shows can get recreated. They can get rebranded. I have a fantastic audience right now, so I that talk to me all the time. So I I'm not going to lose that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know we'll see what happens, but don't go in thinking that you're going to be like Mark Maron and interview the president. <laughs> He's got over 600 and some shows. It took him a long time to get to that point. Oh yeah, and even somebody like that. He's somebody that's already out doing stand up and had a pedigree of writing for things like Saturday Night Live for years and years and years. Even a crappy I can't make money in this town fan base like that is is still gold on podcasting, right? His concert here is sold out because he's a podcaster. Yeah. Because of his show. That's the reason why I went to it. And when I got there, it was it was sold out. There was not a room there wasn't a seat anywhere in that room in the Carnegie Music Hall in uh Mun Hall or Homestead was it Homestead? Yeah. Terrible seats, by the way. Oh, horrible, like the sit, horrible. the sit in. They're all they wooden did, uh, seats. Too. Jane, Silent Bob, get old there too. It was just so bad, so bad. Yeah, but it's a great place to see a, a comedian or some kind of act because you're very close. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the seats are awful to sit. In. <laughs> Terrible wooden seats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Anything else? Anything else you want to impart before we uh, get out of here? Of course, Pod Camp Pittsburgh is coming up. It is the tenth edition. We've had a lot of great memories with Pod Camp. <laughs> yes, we have, um, and I'll. The, the great thing about PodCamp is you never know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And you know, I to steal a line from Big Brother, which I'm usually addicted to, but not this year because I, th I think it's terrible, but expect the unexpected. Like, I, Justine, blew up because of, of PodCamp. She got her start because of PodCamp. It gets um, it gets reiterated over and over uh, whenever she's brought up amongst Alex Lindsay and uh, Leo Laporte on, on uh, Twitter. Uh, oh yeah because she found i mean i was there i witnessed i witnessed the i remember it i was in that i was during that class too. i was in that because uh sick puppy took my picture up against the green screen because i said how many times in my life am i going to have a chance to stand in front of a green screen <laughs> i've got one hanging in my living room right yeah, now a little bit no there's one yeah. i don't know if you guys can see on the video but there's a little bit of green behind him through all that stuff <laughs> that's our green screen back there <laughs> right there so right there it is uh yeah. and, and we're all doing that stuff and it was a lot harder back then like th those ones i did with you yeah. guys a pod camp hey pod camp yes. three you got to stand in front of a that's yeah that is true i did yeah that was fun <laughs> so, but it, it's it's cool that you know anything can happen at these events it's all about networking mm -hmm. uh, it's all about meeting people who share a common passion and like we was a pod camp two that we came up with bacon, bacon, yep. Which the next morning, like we like we came up with that Saturday afternoon. I remember Jesse and uh, Tommy were talking about it. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning, it's on the front page of CNN. It, it's unreal. And they said pod camp Pittsburgh came up with bacon. Google started working with us to work on a bacon filter. Chris Brogan blows up, too. Not literally blows up, but he's very popular now. Mm -hmm. He's one of the he's the one of the reasons why we have PodCamp, and he right, always came right. to PodCamp Pittsburgh. And you know, it's just it goes to show you that it doesn't matter who you are; anyone can make it. It's just you need the drive and the determination, and you need to know what you want to do. And mm -hmm. we can help you find it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of great stories out there. I, 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 I there's always a lot of new faces because well, I think there's a burnout. Yes. I guess because well, my, my first inclination was going to be well, maybe they found their thing and they move on and now they're doing their, their thing. But I think there's a lot of people again, kind of like the podcast thing. They they say I want to do this thing, I want to tweet, and you know, I, I was talking with somebody today. Like I really think social media kind of um, you you're still you, and there's not a really a good way to fake that on there. So if you're good in social, that's going to come out on social media, right? I think one of the things I really like with that too is the people that I met last year. I didn't know any of those people last year that that were well, very few of the people I should say besides like the people, the panelists. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know anybody that came to PodCamp last year. Mm -hmm. I love that because it was all new faces, new perspective, and I think you're right. A lot of people have hit that threshold where they look at the sessions like, "Well, I already know that stuff, so I'm going forward and doing my own thing." But let us know that you are so that we can see what you're doing now. Right, but. Back at the the last podcast or pod camp, you know, Epic Cast wasn't that big. Mm -hmm. No one really knew who they were, and we started talking to them. And now 
they're like the, you know, they're, I don't want to say they're the, the top guns in Pittsburgh, but they've got one hell of a network going on now. Mm-hmm. They've got mm-hmm. a lot of stuff, a lot of great shows too. Not just, Hey, let's throw some comedians on and oh, whatever. We're just going to live off their names. No, they, these guys produce some really good shows. Mm-hmm. I enjoy listening to their shows. And we've, so we've been over to the hardware store. We've checked out the studios and everything. Like, there's a lot of great stuff coming out of Pittsburgh. They just need that little extra push. And you know, if you want to talk to some veterans, this is what we're here for. Right. Right, exactly. We're not going to tell you, you know, the golden secret to making money because if we we had that, well, <laughs> yeah, we know how to stick around for ten years. We know how to keep it going. Yeah, yeah. Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, check it out. Podcampittsburgh dot com. Uh, register if you haven't yet. VIPs if you want a t shirt and, and swag and all that stuff. Actually, there's a swag bag hand, hanging right there behind me. Uh, so uh, you guys will get us something a little extra to, to walk around with. Uh, it is the 10th iteration. We, uh, I, uh, we're we confirmed. Uh, Justin Kanaki, the co-founder of PodCamp Pittsburgh, and Chris Brogan, the co-founder of PodCamp, period, up in Boston. And is he New York Times bestseller? Is he Is he too? Is he, he's a bestseller? I, I, did, I did listen to the audio book of his book. So I've read his books. So I, I, I don't only, actually buy books. Only one but, of them. But uh, yeah, yeah. He's one of the few. Like, sorry, Chris. I don't buy books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I e read everything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, physical books. Huh. It, you know, it is funny. I just came back around and put all of her, like her book is basically her tweets. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I that she was talking about. I was she was on triangulation, and she she she's just like, yeah, I was able to just go back through my social media timeline and figure out how to tell the story and refresh my memory. And I guess they they plug in some of the tweets that she actually made, and then they tell the rest of the story around that. Really quick point about mm. that, or a little side note about it. So, and, and this goes to show you that watch what you publicly tweet, mm-hmm. big time. I got <laughs> I got this message from a friend who said, "Did you know you're in a book?" Wait, and I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "Yeah, one of your tweets is in a book." I'm like, "Oh man, I like as of right now, I've got like sixty thousand some tweets." I'm like. All right, well, what is it? Is it safe? They're like, oh yeah, it's you talking about the Rust Belt. I think that's what it was. Mm-hmm. And I have a, co- I have like, they took a picture of the page for me, and so there's like a book that came out, and I was quoted in it using my tweet, like me and like another person. And I always, I thought that was the coolest thing. I'm like, a, one of my tweets is in a book. Someone took the time to take my tweet and put it in a book. You're published. I, I am published. <laughs> I was actually published in college for for some stuff I wrote, but like mm-hmm. this is the first like like actual book, yeah, that's out there. Like not an ebook or anything like that. Do you, do you like know that. what it is? I have, you know, I don't have it with I'll me. Tweet it later. I do. I have a like the PDF of it. Awesome. And it is at like Barnes and Noble, but yeah. So that was like I I, this it was cool. is a, another weird aside. But do you remember that time we were both interviewed for a book about social media? I do, and I still talk to the author, and I don't know whatever happened to the book. <laughs> Be, uh, him and I became friends because of that interview, and mm-hmm. we found out that we had a mutual love for the movie That Thing You Do. <laughs> so every year on our birthdays, we send each other That Thing You Do message. But yeah, I, I do remember that. That Wow, yeah, because it was a book on social media and podcasting, and, yeah. and he was very much against Web 2.0 because the web is not software. That always stuck in my head. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that just like, blew my mind, so... So Brad King, dude, what happened? <laughs> I want to know. Where's the book? Let, let's watch the let's watch the movie together and talk about the book. We can we can time capsule the book. I'm almost from... positive it's Brad King too, because if it's not, that I'm in deep trouble. <laughs> I, I think it's Brad though. <laughs> All right, uh, DouglasDirt.com, should I drink that.com, PodcampPittsburgh.com. So much going on. You can find uh, it'll be streaming in some fashion. Uh, what well, PodcampPittsburgh.com and uh, through. Uh, I think we're going to use Google YouTube Live and everything like we have in the past. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be a blast. I don't know how many sessions I'm attached to at this point. Point. Do you know how many you're attached to? I'm, I don't know. Well, the first one definitely. The first one definitely. Uh, you, you never know. Then, you, might, you might have to save another SEO class again. There, are, I think there's one open spot left. It's last I knew, there is one open spot. There's left. one spot left, which I love because last year we had to fill some spots. This year we have one spot left. Yeah, and there is no SEO on that schedule. <laughs> it's 
good. I'd like to mention. <laughs> That's good. But if you would like an SEO session, let me know. I'll think about if I can get one together in time. Well, although last year I walked in the room and just taught it. So yeah, <laughs> because uh, the, the instructor wasn't able to make it. So Will and I taught that, but we can, we'll figure it out for you. Let me know. There you go. There I, you go. I do this chisel manizzle. There's a lot of podcasting. And there's a lot of podcasting. I keep looking at this, and every time I find a new podcasting session I wasn't aware of. What's this? I mean, we'll talk about this off, off air, but there's a, a, just a lot of. Yeah, there's one on there that you and I need to talk oh, about. Oh, wait. Is that one me? Wait, is this one I'm? Oh, no. Some of these don't have people's names next to it, so I don't know if I'm supposed to do them or not. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I love about PodCamp is that I would have no problem going in there and saying, okay, well, let's do it. Let's let's figure it out. If there's any of these podcasting ones that don't have names attached, let's just just, just tag team them. Just just go in. And that's, what, that's what I love is I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point. I don't know if you're at this. Well, obviously, you did this last year. I'm at the point where like, hey, can you talk about X? I'm like, yeah, I'll go talk about X. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, that, it was like I have uh, some experience in that. And, uh, and and there's not a topic here I'm not excited about. PodCamp you know? a, or PodCamp in general, is very informal. It's, it's an unconference. So it's a very relaxed atmosphere. Don't, yeah. don't be intimidated. And when you're there, don't worry about getting up and leaving. Right. right. I've had it happen before. I'm, st- I'm still always shocked uh, because I, I uh, John Chamberlain, you jag off. I, I think we were talking when the first episode of this podcast. And he's talking about when he came to pod camp, he's like, everybody was so nice and da 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 da. And I'm just like, I kind of remember talking to that guy back in the day. And I had yeah. just like, you, and you know, you're just like random person. I'm like, eh, I don't know if they're actually going to do anything with this. I don't know if they understand what I'm telling them. And then you find out he's the guy that did this thing. And you're like, oh, <laughs> he's the jag off. <laughs> he's the, I met, we met the, the, the pre jag off, uh, back in the day. So, uh, yeah, I, him, I did it, one of his shows before he became really big. Mm hmm. And I remember he, he just got a hold of me. He's like, yeah, I got this show called You Jag Off. You know, we, would you mind coming on? I'm like, well, do you think I'm a jag off? I was like, <laughs> so what are you talking about? He's like, no, I, I want to talk about your podcast and, now, and everything. I'm like, yeah, sure. What the heck? And now he's doing interviews with Garth Brooks and Mayor Bill Peduto. And we just, we just went up for this uh, this uh, Marine thing today. It's it's tremendous. Let's go check it and out. And he's such a down-to-earth guy. That's oh, the, he is. That's the thing oh, about completely. podcasters in Pittsburgh is I think there's maybe like a very, very small number who are actually jerks, like pretentious jerks about who think they're above everyone else. Mm-hmm. And no one listens to their like show. Like a podcaster? So oh, that's good because I haven't met those guys. Thankfully. Yeah, there's just some. And it, thankfully, it's no one that we have to deal with. But it, <laughs> like, I've I've heard of, like people have said, can you listen to these shows? Let me know what you think. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, my God, what jerks? <laughs> they're in Pittsburgh. And then like their shows die after like three episodes or four yeah, episodes. Yeah. But there, there is a small number of that. But for the most part, the podcasting community is very like arms open. Hey, let's let's do this together. It's good stuff. Let us know if you're starting your podcast. Don't be a jerk. That's the first. Tip. Don't be a jag. There you go. Don't be a jag. Yes, off. don't be jags. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Check everything out. Awesomecast.net. We'll be there live uh, on the Sunday. And I believe we are going, I think it's confirmed. I think uh, somebody from uh, Pittsburgh Podcasting Network is going to do the slot before us too. So there's going to be multiple live podcasts happening at PodCamp. I love That's this. That's awesome. A multimedia event. It's going to be tons of fun uh, down at Point Park University, August 15th and 16th. If you're catching this later, there will be videos online. There will be stuff streamed online. Go check out all that stuff. It's going to be a blast. And we'll see Doug Durda there. Thank you to our awesome guests. Doug Durda. Thank you for having me. The most reverent father spoon. You'll always be to me, sir. <laughs> Hair or not. Collar or not. And uh, thank you for being our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.